Hi, I'm Jane Solomon, one of the Biofield Reader Trainers, and I'm going to take you through how to set up your room for Biofield scanning so that you can take good, uh, good pictures of your clients or patients using the Biofield Reader imaging system. So, how large an area do you need? Well, ideally, a room dedicated to scanning would be great, but not many therapists have the space. So, here's a possible room setup giving you an idea of the dimensions you'll need. In this setup we have a fluorescent full spectrum tube on a T-bar resting on a light stand. There's a camera on a tripod which will be directly in front of and in line with the light and with the subject who'll stand on this mat or platform over here. If you want to avoid shadows on the back wall have the platform or the mat about 30 centimetres, that's one foot, away from the wall. And recommended distance between the platform and the light is 2 to 2.5 metres, which is about 6 to 8 feet. There's more about room setups in tutorial on lighting and positioning the subject. So why take biofield scans? There are several reasons to do a scan and they can help you assess areas of balance and imbalance in the light or the biofield on and around the body and you can also show your client where their light or energy is out of balance. You can do scans before, during and after therapy in order to assess and monitor changes occurring in the biofield due to therapy or maybe a change in lifestyle or diet. We found that biofield scans taken with biofield reader act as visual reinforcement for the client. Generally they'll feel well, have an improved feeling of well-being during their treatment and they can also see their scans which show a move towards more balanced patterns and colours. This helps boost their morale and they know that what they are feeling isn't all in their mind. And scans can also validate therapy as they give an objective view of changes during therapy which everybody can see. And in the pictures below we've got a scan taken before healing begins and then after during the healing and you can see changes. If you'd like to see those pictures in more detail, you can see them on our website and there's details of that at the end of the slides. Do have a look at the Biofield Reader user manual as well as watching this tutorial. The user manual has lots of useful information and tips on using Biofield Reader program. It covers all aspects of imaging and there's info in the manual that isn't on this tutorial and vice versa. So it's well worth a look. Just go to our website here, biofieldimaging.com, and you'll see an image like this one on the home page about halfway down. Just click on it and you'll get a free download of the user manual. We often get asked, where do I set up for scans? So we saw in a previous scan the kind of area and dimensions you'll need for setting up. This could be in your therapy room or your therapy office or a room in your house, maybe a spare room, or maybe you can clear an area in a room and do your scanning there. I've just pulled together a few important points to remember when preparing an area for scanning. And there's more in the user manual. So you're going to need the room to be warm so that the subject is comfortable. You'll need a blackout blind or heavy curtain at the window to block out extraneous light. The exception to this would be if you're using a flash, on a still camera with flash, but there's more about that in the lighting tutorial. But generally you'll need to block out extraneous light because if, for example, you take an initial scan with the sunlight coming in through the window, and then you do subsequent scans of the same person and you have light coming in from an overcast day, the scans will be altered by the differing light conditions and they won't be suitable for comparison. Because if you have sunlight coming in, you may have light areas and shadows on the subject, 
which will cause different colours and patterns on your filtered scan, which has nothing to do with the subject's biofield. There's more about this in the tutorial, so do have a look. You'll need a plain background wall or screen for the subject to stand in front of. And if at all possible, try to avoid using a wall for the subject to stand against. If it's got electric sockets, this isn't always possible, but if you've got the choice, then do. You'll need a small platform or mat for the person to stand on, and uh, this will help prevent the grounding of the subject's energy to earth which might occur if they're standing on a marble or a stone floor and this would affect the scan results. And also a platform or mat would be more comfortable for the person to stand on if there is a cold marble or stone floor in the scanning area. You can also measure or mark out where the platform or mat will go so that the subject always stands in the same place if you're doing a series of scans for comparison. Furniture, try to keep this to a minimum and always have it in the same place as furniture can cause reflections which may affect the scan. If you can't move it away from the scanning area then do make sure it's always in the same place and then you will always have the same reflections which you can make allowances for. And same with electrical equipment, turn it off and keep it to a minimum as it can generate its own electromagnetic fields which can interfere with the subject's energy. You'll also need um, to think about lighting and you'll need a camera that could be webcam, camcorder or still camera with flash. You'll need a computer, your biofield reader program and a printer if you're going to be printing off pictures for your clients to take home. Have a look at the section in the user manual on biofield scans and on the right here we've got a, a photo of a good scanning setup. We've got a plain light wall for the subject to stand in front of. We've got blackout blinds over the windows which were right the way along this side of the room on this wall here so we're blocking out extraneous light we've got internal light source here which is a full spectrum fluorescent tube resting on a t-bar on a light stand and we're lucky here we haven't got any electric sockets in the wall you can see the camera here resting on a tripod and the light, the camera and the subject are all lined up in a line and we've got the subject standing in the middle of the two side walls, so one side wall here and the other side wall here so that the light, the light bounces off equally and distributes evenly over him. And also we're lucky as well there's no furniture close to the subject. We often get asked, do I always need to prepare for a scan? Well, generally the answer is yes, but of course sometimes you can't prepare fully if you're going to be doing a spontaneous or one-off scan. But I would recommend that you try to have the light distributed evenly over the subject if you're doing a one-off. So preparing for the scan, yes, definitely if you're making comparisons, that is if you're doing scans before, during and after therapy and also if you're doing a series of scans to chart progress or change. And why prepare? Well I think that preparation gives you confidence, it gives you good quality scans and more reliable results. So if you've prepared and standardised your scanning environment by keeping the setup the same for all scans, you will be able to measure changes in the subject's energy or biofield rather than seeing changes caused by inconsistency in the setup, which can affect the colours and patterns seen in the scan. If you haven't got the perfect scanning area, don't panic. Just standardise your environment the best you can and keep everything the same for all scans. I've done scans under lots of different conditions, but by standardising I know that I can 
make good comparisons between the scans. Have a look at the section in the user manual on backgrounds and you're going to need a light coloured, non-reflective, plain background for the subject to stand in front of and this allows the subject's light or biofield to be clearly defined. On the left here the background is a portable screen which you can fold away when you're not using. You can take it to exhibitions or to clients' homes if you've got a mobile clinic. And you can also get blinds which roll up to the ceiling. They're fixed to the ceiling so you can roll it up and store it out of the way when not in use. And on the right here the backgrounds are plain matte wall and both work equally well. Here's a couple of scans showing how a plain background allows the field to be clearly seen. On the left we can see the patterns and the colours clearly above this young girl's head and also the striations around her neck which suggests neck tension and she'd also got a sore throat. And on the right the young man standing against a plain background, it's a light yellow coloured wall and you can clearly see striations, streamers of energy connecting with him. Here we can see how a pattern background makes it difficult to differentiate the field around the person. This is pattern tiles and you, you can see some colours and striations but they're not as clearly defined as they were against the plain background. It's a little bit something going on here as well. I've just um, thought it's worth mentioning a few points to remember when you're setting up your scanning room or area. Try to make sure that the light is evenly distributed over the subject and place the lighting in line with the camera and subject which you can see here in the previous photo we saw. And these two shots are taken with fluorescent tube <clears throat> on the ceiling in line with the subject and the camera. So that, that doesn't actually look quite the right angle but imagine it on the ceiling um, in line with these two points and don't have the subject standing under the light directly under it because you get what we call white out you can read about that in the user manual where there's too much light so you're going to need to leave a space between the far end of the light and where the subject stands so leave a space about three to four feet that's a meter just over a meter and then you won't get white out so that's uh, with a blind and that's with the wall as a background it's worth mentioning if you're going to be going to exhibitions or doing spontaneous scans. It's not always possible to prepare fully, but do think of the lighting and the camera position and the position of the subject. Do the best you can. We've taken our portable lighting to exhibitions only to find that the electric's off or, or something's gone wrong. So um, do the best you can and have the subject facing any light source like a window and try and get the light evenly distributed over them and line up your camera. Try and have a plain background, you could take a screen along and you can get good scans even under far from optimum conditions. This is the same slide as I showed you earlier on a possible one possible room setup where we've got the light on the t-bar just got a little bit more information here so you you can think about this when you're deciding where to set up for your scans you're going to need to position the subject on platform or mat which you'll have about a foot or 30 centimeters away from the wall to avoid shadows on the wall if you can place the subject in the middle of uh, the two side walls so that the light bounces off them equally you're going to need to mark the position of your platform or your mat on the floor. Um, so you can mark it on the floor or measure it from the walls, however you want to do it. Same with your light stand and you'll have your camera on a tripod. 
because you're going to need to change the height of that as you're scanning and you'll need to keep the light in the same place so you're going to need to measure where it, it goes or mark something on the floor and the same with the height of the light you're going to need to measure that so as we said before 2 to 2.5 meters that's 6 to 8 feet is a good space between the light and where the subject stands I hope you found this tutorial interesting and useful and there are more tutorials on taking therapy scans there's another one on lighting and lighting setups portable fixed lighting on different types of cameras you can use and um, camera settings that we recommend and also on scanning the subject the position adjusting the camera height that kind of thing there's more information on our website that's biofieldimaging.com there's also lots of useful case histories and things on our blog spot and we've got some fascinating videos showing real-time footage using Biofield Reader. There's a couple of videos showing movement and changes in light as people make energetic connections. And there's also a couple of videos showing changes in light as groups of people send positive thought towards crystals. And the changes are quite remarkable. It's what the eye doesn't normally see. And also we're on Facebook. Again, we've got some interesting um, bits on case histories, uh, general info, and please leave a post if you like. And that's it for now. I hope you'll join me on some of the other tutorials.